The world of magic and swords has advanced, and now science has brought the world trucks, firearms, and even telephones. But on the other side of the wall, in the Old Kingdom, the dead run rampant. Only one hero can stand against them, a necromancer known as Abhorson, fighting with sword and magic to bend the deceased to his will. But when an ancient enemy stirs, Abhorson goes missing. The only hope is his daughter, an untested mage raised outside the Old Kingdom. Sabriel must gather her wits, traverse an unfamiliar land, find her father, and save the world from an undead threat. Sabriel was published in 1995 and was written by Garth Nix. And this will be another audiobook review, but oh my god, this one is narrated by Tim Curry. The first in a trilogy, Sabriel is a very refreshing take on necromancers. Most people who picture necromancers or warlocks or those types of mages would probably think of some dark, shadowy creep who consorts with demons and zombies. Sabriel is very much the opposite, starting out as a mature prefect in her school with an above average understanding of necromancy thanks to her father's lessons. She was much more sweet and innocent rather than dark and gothic. That change alone makes the book worth checking out, but that's not the only reason. Sabriel makes for a very dynamic and engaging character. She always tries to do what she sees as right, like early on when she didn't report a classmate for being out after curfew because that classmate was chasing a pet rabbit. And when her father goes missing, she doesn't even question her next move for more than a moment and then goes after him. She isn't very naive, but still has a lot to learn about the world, and that gap in her knowledge allows for a lot of growth as a character. Growth which Nyx uses to great advantage. She has to ask questions and explore in order to get through her trials, which does wonders for exploring the world. Helping Sabriel is a mystical spirit in the form of a talking cat named Mogget. Mogget is a snobbish creature, snide and knowledgeable, and more than willing to rub it in Sabriel's face. He is vital to Sabriel's journey, and his dialogue is often amusing, mocking Sabriel's ignorance. He very much acts like a spoiled cat. Well, except for when he's in his crazy murder phases, but I don't want to spoil that lovely little tidbit. Another traveling companion of Sabriel's is Touchstone. A young man frozen as a wooden figurehead in an old ship, Touchstone can't remember who he was or how he wound up as he did. He's a trained swordsman, though, and extremely loyal, always speaking to Sabriel with the highest respect. Comically enough, Touchstone's politeness always annoys Sabriel, which leads to some amusing dialogue. However, locked away in Touchstone's past are several dark secrets, including one that could easily destroy him if he isn't careful. Now, like I said before, this audiobook is narrated by Tim Curry, so you're basically listening to Nigel Thornberry read you a bedtime story. And while I love Tim Curry as an actor, he just didn't do it for me as a narrator. Curry kept his voice in a low tone for most of the book, and it became a little monotonous to listen to after a while. There was very little life in his voice for most of the book, even between most of the characters he portrayed. The only time he did anything different was when he voiced a non-human character like Magad or some of the dead. I mean, Tim, I love you man, and anyone who can pull off Sweet Transvestite has got some serious acting chops, but narrating audiobooks is not one of your strengths. At least not in this case. The world itself, while somewhat divided by an ancient wall, has a unique combination of magic and science. If you think of a post-World War I Britain with magic thrown in, then you're on the right track. Things like trucks and tanks are uncommon, but are still known about well enough that seeing them isn't a huge shock. Magic, for the most part, is divided between free magic and charter magic. By the way, get used to hearing the term charter magic about 20,000 times. While I've been told that they get more defined in the sequels, free magic is sort of this raw energy that exists all around, and charter magic is the safer, more contained version of it, more commonly used for spells. Sabriel knows a number of different charter spells, but the magic she relies on most would be the bells she carried around in a bandolier. Necromancers use magic to help charm the dead, and in Sabriel and her father's cases, they use a set of seven bells, each with a different effect and different name. The book was kind of clumsy by introducing four of them all at once, so it's hard to keep their names and effects straight. The only bell I can remember without looking it up is Rana. The book does counter by giving a brief reminder each time a bell is used, which keeps you from racking your brain trying to remember some obscure name. So I guess Sabriel is more of a bardic necromancer. Suddenly I really want to play D&D. The writing style is pretty good, there's some decent polish, but there were some issues I took with it. For starters, the world building was a little weak. 
Nix clearly had a lot of detail put into his universe, but it wasn't always transcribed effectively. Some information is written as if you're already supposed to know what's going on, like the previously mentioned charter magic. Several times I had to pause and wonder if I had accidentally picked up the second or third book in a series. Because of that, it was a little difficult to really get into the world, especially during the middle of the book. However, the writing does smooth itself out and establish everything it needs to in time for a very enjoyable climax. The second thing I noticed was the overuse of similes. At its worst, it felt like there was a new simile every paragraph. I'm not saying you can't use similes, but after a while it became distracting, like a crutch Nix relied upon, made all the more awkward with Curry using the same sober tone to announce them. Garth Nix relies on similes the same way I rely on blinking. Overall, the audiobook for Sabriel was pretty good. Not a bad time to be had, for sure. The characters were enjoyable, the magic system was interesting, and while the plot takes a while to really get going, it does get pretty good in the third act. I'd recommend just reading the book for yourself, though, instead of the audiobook. Thanks to a listless performance, the audiobook itself is... kind of meh. Some people might like it, but I'm not one of them. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.